Good morning, good morning. Happy, happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. I had a fabulous weekend. In fact, um, this weekend on Saturday, I ran in the 5K for the Rock and Roll Las Vegas Humana race. And I did really, really good. In fact, um, I, I had, I wanted to have like a, a personal best for me. My personal best of running a mile typically, and I, I used to always lie around it. So in high school, you know, they would, people would say, yeah, do it in 12 minutes. And that was like really great, right? And I used to always say that I, would, I was doing it, yeah, 12 minutes. But typically, I think I was just really super lazy. I just think that's what it was. And so I was really, my miles were probably like taking, I would take like 15, 20 minutes, you know? And so I really wasn't doing myself any favors by lying about it. Good morning. And so because I did that, um, I really just kind of robbed myself of really like embracing, you know, being a part of the community of running because I always loved running, but I just never allowed myself to be part of that. And so, uh, but anyways, I did uh, end up training. I thought, you know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right because uh, my ultimate goal is to continuously move forward, meaning getting better at my craft because I do love to run. And so uh, I'm, I'm hoping to start running. I have a good friend here in Vegas who uh, her and I are going to start running together. And I'm also hopefully going to look for a running club so that I can get more into it so I can get better at it, work my way up to maybe uh, another five, perhaps then moving into a 10K, and then beyond that, a uh, half marathon to a full marathon at some point. I don't know about the whole Ironman thing and the whole triathlon. I'm not really a, a water person. I mean, I like the water, but I'm not really one to want to swim in the ocean, so that's not my thing because I can't see what's a, 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 uh, like below me and around me, you know, the whole thing with, you know, I'm not in my element and things like to bite so <laughs> but i might even look at doing a biath a biathlon meaning that i can do the biking and the running so we'll see about that but i mean those are long-term goals but right now i was just really super excited that i finished the race it was fun and i enjoyed that so that was my weekend i hope that you had a fabulous weekend too today i wanted to talk to you about how attitude is everything because i feel like attitude can make or break you it's essential for our, our emotional well-being to achieve self-awareness around our emotions so that we make better decisions on how we respond when we are triggered based on how we are feeling. So achieving self-awareness means taking time to really getting to know who you are, you know, being open to change because guess what? Change is inevitable. There's nothing that you can do about it. Things just change. And embracing that pivoting may be part of the process. In fact, it's a part of the process that we oftentimes resist not only do we resist change, but then things change and then maybe we have to pivot, you know, go in a different direction than what we thought we were going to do or what we intentionally set out to do. And sometimes those are where the, the beautiful moments are revealed to us. So good morning. I'm Leslie Gaudet and I'm an empowerment coach. I help my clients achieve self-awareness around their emotions so that they can handle their triggers, manage their emotions rather than the other way around and live a more positive life. So again, this week I wanted to come to you and talk to you about the importance of attitude. Before I get started, let me explain the trigger cycle. So as you can see behind me, I've got this trigger cycle. And what this is, is it's a cycle that's on repeat. So triggers are things that make us show up emotionally. So they could be the anniversary date of loss or trauma. Uh, it could be a, a scary news event. You know, we've always got a lot of things that are happening right now and they get reported on very quickly. So that can bring our awareness around that. It could be um, isolation. You know, you isolate yourself because you maybe you just are not comfortable in being around other people, but then you start isolating yourself and then you become more afraid to actually get out there and put yourself out there. Um, how about family friction? Now, that's a big one because, you know, we all uh, shared space with family members. Even if you were an only child, it doesn't matter. You shared space with your parents and for many years. And so you, at some point, you know, when you're old enough, you moved out, um, but you still have those, those things that happen in your life and you assigned emotions to those, those experiences, those memories. Uh, it could also be um, things like the ending of a relationship, whether it's romantic or long-term friendship. And finally, uh, it could be also financial problems. This is just a few that I can name off the top of my head. So again, triggers, what they do is they fuel our emotions, the way we emotionally show up, uh, how we are triggered. What our emotions do is they, 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 do, they drive our responses, you know, the things that we say, 
and we do, our actions. So how we show up emotionally to how we are being triggered is how we're going to respond by the things that we say and we do. And typically what will happen is our responses are going to take us down one of two paths. Either we are self-aware of how we are emotionally showing up every time we're triggered around something, and it doesn't even have to be something that is um, those typical triggers that I've told you about. There's different ways of being triggered, internally triggered, externally triggered, both. And I talked about that last week. But um, the thing is, what will happen is if it's a negative one, that basically takes us down the road to guilt, shame, and regret of the, something that we've said or done. And it could even be said to someone or done that can undermine our own success in life. And so then we have to go back and fix it. Or if we are self-aware, then we are going to take ourselves down a positive path, meaning we're more mindful of how we are emotionally triggered. And we're more mindful that, okay, this is typically how we would show up before, the things that we would say and we do. But now we've learned to that, okay, that's how I used to be. This is how I want to be. And so we have we've taken responsibility and are allowing ourselves to show up in those ways that are more positive so that we can get back to living our lives. So that's what the trigger cycle is. And as I said, it's on repeat every day, sometimes multiple times a day. So as I said, I achieve my, help my clients achieve self-awareness around this cycle, around their emotions, so that they not only learn to spot their emotional triggers, but they also learn to manage their emotions so that their emotions don't manage them. And in turn, they keep repeating the same old patterns of saying and doing things that they often regret and have to go back and fix. And what does that do when you're in that perpetual of always going back and fixing things? Well, I always, I've said this before, it puts you in the past, meaning you have one foot in the past, always looking over your shoulder, having to go back and fix something that you've said and done because you've now had time to cool off, to think about it and have to go back and fix something because you've said something or done something that's undermined your success or maybe you've hurt someone's feelings. So if that's your normal MO, then you're always in the past with one foot in the past, as, I, as I've said, always looking over your shoulder, having to go back and fix things. You're barely in your present life, meaning you can't, you can't really even focus fully on what you're doing now. And then of course, what does that leave you? No, no chance of even looking to the future of what you can do to even like get yourself moving forward into your future. So that's why I would say it's really important to learn how to do this. Um, so getting back to the importance of attitude. Attitude can make or break you. And what I mean is your attitude sets the tone for how you show up every day in every experience, in every setting, and in every encounter. And you don't even have to say a word to express your attitude. Okay? Your body language can say it all in just two seconds flat. As soon as you walk into a room, if you have a bad attitude, it can immediately be felt by everyone that you encounter because you are leading with a bad attitude. Same thing goes for a good or a great attitude. Your body language will reflect that and others will pick up on it. Now, I don't know about you, but I typically don't want to be around someone or feel comfortable, and I don't even feel comfortable, comfortable around being, being around someone who's leading with a bad attitude. And I don't know how you feel about that, but that's how I feel. I don't want to be around someone who's got a bad attitude, if that's their MO all the time. I would rather be around someone who is in a, you know, has a good attitude. Even if you're, you know, life is life. Life happens. No one's life is perfect. And if they tell you that their life is perfect, that's not true. No one's life is perfect. Now, some people might have a better life because they have a better attitude, meaning that, yeah, something might be going bad today, like right this moment, but if they put themselves in the right attitude, the right mindset, they're able to get through it quicker than if someone is holding on to that saying, oh, this woe is me, this is what my life is throwing at me right now, and it's awful. And so they choose to be in that attitude, that mindset, and, that, and they're not allowing themselves to have the right attitude to get out of it. So I have a question. Have you ever met someone who was amazing? Like you just loved meeting them and talking with them. You felt great energy and you loved being around them. They were leading with an awesome attitude. And in your very first few seconds of meeting them, you wanted to keep talking with them because you wanted to get to know more about who they were, 
who they are because you felt this amazing energy flowing from them. That's what I mean by your attitude leading through your body language. Your attitude will set the stage for your interactions with others, your experiences, all day, every day, okay? So that's why I always remind you at the end of my lives to navigate your day with an attitude of gratitude because with the right attitude, it puts you in the right mindset. So I want you to be mindful of that today. And so, so to help you with that, I've got some tips for you to take into your day today. So when you, number one, when you walk into a room, into any room, I want you to imagine that you are having the best day of your life and that every encounter that you will experience today is going to be amazing. Now, I know it's not going to be easy, but if you just have that attitude, just flip the switch and say, today, I'm going to have the best day of my life. I, and every experience is going to be amazing. Every encounter is going to be amazing. You're going to put yourself in the right mindset. You're having the right attitude. Which, as I said, put yourself in the right mindset. I want you to lead with gratitude. I want you to lead with being positive. Your energy around that, that right mindset, will precede you into every encounter because your body language will reflect that attitude. It will. If you walk into the room and you're saying, oh, I'm in a pissed off mood, you know, and, and you, I don't feel good and I don't care, you walk into that room and people are going to pick up on that right away. Two seconds. And that's a first impression, right? And what if you're meeting someone for the first time? That's your first impression. That's their first impression of you. So if you want it to be, if you're meeting someone for the, especially if you're meeting someone for the first time, you're going into a meeting, you're going to a job interview, you're going to meet someone because maybe you're doing a new business venture. Maybe you want to learn something. When you walk into a room, that room today, even if it's virtual, a Zoom call, if it's on a phone call, I want you to imagine that you're going to have the best day of your life today and that every encounter that you experience is going to be amazing and that you, I want you to lead with gratitude, be grateful for everything that you have because more, more grateful, more, the more grateful you are, the more good things will come your way. And I want you to lead with being more positive. Your energy, again, around that will precede you in every encounter and into every encounter that you have because your body language will reflect that attitude. Your body language will even reflect that attitude. If you're on the phone and you have a great attitude, that's coming across. Believe it or not, auditory is the same thing. With that, you will notice that you will feel more calm, more focused, and confident in your encounters with others because your attitude will be positive. You will notice that you'll feel more calm. You will notice that you're more focused and confident in every encounter with, every, with someone else because your attitude will be positive. You'll have the right mindset. I was looking online today, all about attitude, because I know this week is going to be around attitudes, because attitude is so important. And it's, it's important because I want you to, to realize that gratitude is, it starts with attitude, right? So I was looking, um, and I, I wanted to bring you the top 10 quotes that I found that were written about having a good, a good attitude. So here it goes. Number 10, a positive attitude causes a chain reaction of positive thoughts, events, and outcomes. It is a catalyst, and it sparks extraordinary results. And that was written by Wade Boggs. And if you don't know who he is, he's an athlete. He's a baseball player, or was a baseball player. Uh, I'm not really up on my, my athletes as far as baseball, like who's playing now and who's not playing now, but I know who Wade Box is. Number nine, I believe that a trusting attitude and a patient attitude go hand in hand. You see, sorry, I have allergies. You see, when you let go and learn to trust God, it releases joy in your life. And when you trust God, you're able to be more patient. Patience is not just about waiting for something. It's about how you wait or, or your attitude while waiting. And that's by Joyce Meyer, who's an author. I like that one. Number eight, style is a reflection of your attitude and your personality. That's Sean Ashmore, who's an actor. Number seven, 
Reject your sense of injury and the injury itself disappears. Marcus Aurelius, he's a, he was a Roman soldier. So you know when we hold on to things like grudges, we're giving that an emotion, power, and meaning. I talked about that last week. So if we're able to like, if we hold on to like an, an old injury, in other words, a grudge, it's leading our life with our attitude, with our emotions, how we manage our life, how our, our emotions manage us. But if we allow that injury, that sense of injury that, to disappear, in other words, you don't allow it to have to hold power over us anymore, it disappears. So I think that's what he means by that. He meant by that, I should say. Uh, number six, I think that life is difficult. People have challenges. Family members get sick. People get older. You don't always get the job or, or the promotion that you want. You have conflicts in your life. And really, life is about your resilience and your ability to go through your life and all of the ups and downs with a positive attitude. That's by Jennifer Hyman, who was a, who was a businesswoman. Number five, I don't go by or change my attitude based on what people say. At the end of the day, they too are judging me from their perspective. I would rather be myself and let people accept me for what I am than be somebody who I am not just because I want people's approval. That's Karen Patel. She's an actor. So, yeah, I get that because people, uh, so, you know, if you scroll through so social media, you might start doing the comparison syndrome about how others are doing in business or in life, and they look like they've got it all together. So you're judging them. You're judging yourself. Others might be judging you for what you're doing, but I would, I, I, I think I agree with that. I'd rather be who I am and let people accept me for who I am than trying to be who I'm not just because I want someone that's to approve of what I'm doing. I want to go all in on being authentically me. And so that's really important. Number four, a strong, positive mental attitude will create more miracles than any wonder drug. Patricia Neal, actor, I like that one too. Number three, I believe if you keep your faith, you keep your trust. You keep the right attitude if you're grateful. You'll see God open up new doors. That's Joel Austin, he's a pastor. Now, I, I agree with that, absolutely. Keeping the right attitude, especially when it's around being grateful for everything that you have, opens up new doors. Like God will open up new doors for you. If you, especially if you are open and accepting of change because change is inevitable and that pivoting may be part of the process. I mean, that's totally, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, number two, all I can control is myself and just keep having a positive attitude. Rose Namajunas, she's an athlete and I agree with that. And number, the number one tip is around attitude, quote around attitude is, Choosing to be positive and having a grateful attitude is going to determine how you're going to live your life. Absolutely agree with this 100%. If you choose po to be positive, and if you choose to be mindful about being grateful about everything that you have in your life, having that grateful attitude is going to help you not only get through your life every day, it's going to determine how you're going to live your life every day. So that's why I always say, navigate your day with an attitude of gratitude. Now, I started um, a free Facebook group, Manager Triggers VIP Academy, so that you, my audience, my Facebook family, would have a place to meet, to talk about real issues just like this around our emotions, around this cycle that we navigate. Because attitude is important. It can make or break every encounter that you will have on a daily basis and you don't even have to say a word not even one word to make that impression of what your attitude is in that moment your body language will be the first impression you make when you walk into a room when you even make a phone call if you're on a zoom call if you're on just a regular phone call if you email someone, if you text someone, your attitude can come through. I'm telling you, it comes through even through your texts, through your emails, phone calls, in-person meetings. These are, are the types of things that I cover in my, my free Facebook group. And in that group, you get community, like-minded individuals who are going to support, uplift, and encourage you with no judgment all ready to just be a part of something to help each other get through this, get through this, 
learning how to get through it daily, accountability through mental coursework, which will be provided by me, expansion of your comfort zone, you know, challenges where you will learn to step outside of your comfort zone and show up for yourself in ways that you didn't think were possible. And access to me, I go live every Thursday for a live coaching Q&A. I go live at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're looking to level up your emotional awareness around your triggers, how you're emotionally triggered, and if you're ready to take back control of your emotions, which is the only piece in this cycle right now that you can start with learning to control, then I encourage you to join my free Facebook group and join the community who have already said yes it's time for me to take back control of my emotions and start living a more positive life. Because wouldn't it be great if you could start living the life you love right now and start loving the life you're living? If you're ready, click on the link in the title notes to get free access to the group. I really hope that this was helpful for you to hear today because learning to and ultimately getting, gaining self-awareness around your emotions is super important to your emotional well-being so that you can start living a more positive life today. I do have one favor to ask. I ask that you share my video and help me help others. If I only reach one person today, it could be the one person who's been struggling that saw me, who's been struggling, and this message resonates. And they realize that, that maybe they're re thinking that there isn't, but they realize in that moment that there is a light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to managing their emotions. They may not even realize that they're on autopilot around this cycle and that I, by listening to my message, they, they are, they're realizing that they do have control if they're ready to take that control. And now all they have to do is join them, click, click in the, the notes to join the group and join that community and just start feeling that they're a part of something that they can actually start to learn self-awareness around their own emotions, around how they're emotionally triggered. Now remember, as I've always said, navigate your day with an attitude of gratitude because with the right attitude, it will put you in the right mindset for when life happens. Because it will. It will happen maybe only once today maybe many times today. And it's how you show up with your attitude, with your body language is going to help make or break you around this cycle. I'm Lisa Gadette and I'm an empowerment coach. I help my clients achieve self-awareness around their emotions so they can handle their triggers, manage their emotions, and live a more positive life. Oh, one last thing. Just check out the title notes above. I created a free resource for you to help you kickstart your day to achieve harmony through scheduling time just for you you'll feel better for it. So click on the link and get access now. And thank you again so much for watching. I appreciate your support in uplifting and encouraging me to keep going. I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you all tomorrow. Have a fabulous day. Bye for now.